Thank you so very, very much. God bless you all. And what a tremendous patriot and voice for Christian values Pastor Rick Scarborough has been. You know, I'll tell you, in Texas, the last year and a half, we have traveled quite a journey. When we started this campaign in Texas for U.S. Senate a year and a half ago, I was at 2% in the polls. And the margin of error was 3%. <laughs> Which, if my statistics serves, means technically I could have been at negative 1%. We ended up seeing a primary where $50 million was spent, the most expensive primary in the country. I'll tell you, you have not lived till you've had $35 million of attack ads run against you. <laughs> My wife, Heidi, midway through watching some of these ads, turned to me and said, goodness gracious, I didn't realize you were such a rotten guy. Nobody in the state gave us a prayer. But something extraordinary happened. We saw conservatives unite across Texas and all across this country. We saw thousands and thousands and thousands of Republican women and Tea Party leaders and grassroots activists come together. And we didn't just win the race. We won by 14 points. That is a tribute to each and every one of you. It was a testament to the power of grassroots conservatives. And you know, that's how elections are supposed to be decided. It's not supposed to be a dozen guys in a smoky room picking who's going to be the next candidate. It's supposed to come down to the people. You know, this election right now is not your typical election. The stakes have never been higher than they are right now in 2012. I want to talk about four different threats our country sees right now. Number one, our economic security is threatened like never before. Federal government spending is out of control. Our national debt is larger than our gross domestic product. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I had the incredible honor of speaking in Tampa at the Republican Convention. And I talked about the crushing debt. I talked about my four-year-old daughter, Caroline. When I got back to my hotel room, it was about 1.30 in the morning, and I pulled out my iPhone, was reading through Twitter. And the comedian, Paula Poundstone, had actually sent out a tweet. I, I don't know her, but I, I read the tweet, and the tweet said, Ted Cruz just said when his daughter was born, the national debt was $10 trillion. Now it's $16 trillion. What the heck did she do? <laughs> I got to tell you, Heidi and I had a pretty good laugh at that. But it underscores the massive game-changing shifts that have happened in the last three and a half years. When Barack Obama was elected, it had taken 43 presidents, two centuries, to build up a $10 trillion debt. In three and a half years, that has grown to over $16 trillion. We are galloping down the road to where Greece and Italy of much, and much of Europe find themselves. And I'll tell you, I think we're blessed because we have foreshadowing. We can look across the Atlantic and see where the end of this road takes us. And I'll tell you what, Americans, we will not go quietly into the night. And I give you my word, my very top priority in the U.S. Senate if and when together we win the general election in November. With your help, we will. 
will be to help lead the fight to dramatically shrink the size, power, and spending of the federal government. And the very first item on the agenda will be to repeal every single word of Obamacare. We've got to stop the abuse of federal power. We've got to stop the out-of-control regulatory state in Washington that isn't accountable to Congress or the people. We've got to stop the abusive enforcement of environmental laws. And I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with a lizard in West Texas <laughs> that the Obama administration was talking about using to try to shut down oil and gas production. Now, I'll tell you, i got a couple of things to say about that. Number one, that's our lizard. <laughs> and you know what? They make darn fine boots. <laughs> you want to understand the harmful impact out-of-control regulation can have. I encourage you to go out to western Pennsylvania. The Marcellus Shale there doesn't end at the state border, but the jobs do. There is an incredible explosion of productivity with natural gas. Western Pennsylvania there is seeing 9% growth. And you walk 10 feet north across that state line, and the knuckle-headed politicians in New York won't let them develop those resources. And Maryland. <laughs> Apparently, the politicians there think unemployed people in New York don't want to work. Look, this is dangerous. Unchecked federal government power threatens everyone's liberty. We need to repeal Dodd-Frank. Talk about a bill that you don't need to read any further than the title to know nothing good can come of it. We need to audit the Federal Reserve. Just this week, we discovered QE3. Because, you know, printing vast sums of money, that's always worked out well for countries. We need sound money in this country. Our economic future is threatened. But not just that. Our national security is threatened. You know, the events this week in Libya and throughout the Middle East underscore what a dangerous world we live in. There are radicals throughout the world, Islamic terrorists that would murder each and every one of us. And you know, it says something that we have a president of the United States who is un utterly unable to utter the words, radical Islamic terrorist. You know, just this week we remembered the tragedy of 9-11. And if memory serves me right, it wasn't a random collection of Boy Scouts on those airplanes. It was radicals who wanted to destroy us, our lives, our faith, our values, and our way of life. And you look at what's happening in the Middle East right now, we all mourn Ambassador Chris Stevens. 
and the four whose lives were stripped from them by a murderous mob. If there's one principle consistent throughout history, it's that bullies and tyrants don't respect weakness. My friend here in the front row harkens back to our founding era. <laughs> Again, if my recollection serves me, the Declaration of Independence didn't say, our rights are being trampled, we'd like to sit down and have some tea. And I'll tell you, as unrest sweeps the Middle East, and we all hope and pray that it tempers dampen, there is no time when it is more critical that we stand unfailingly with our ally, the nation of Israel. And it speaks volumes that this week we discovered President Obama was just too busy to make time to meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu. He is going next week on David Letterman. That's Obama, not Netanyahu. But the president doesn't have time to stand with Israel, and that is dangerous. It is dangerous for Israel. It is dangerous for the world. It is dangerous for the United States of America. Right. Number three, our religious liberties are threatened. You know, Family Research Council just recently saw the kind of bigotry and hatred and violence that can be directed at people of faith. And every one of us should be thankful to Leo Johnson. who risked his life and stopped potentially the murder of many innocents. President Obama, sadly, has not respected religious liberty. Indeed, his administration has manifested contempt for our religious liberty. You know, it wasn't too long ago that the Democratic Party was a party that was proud to be the first major political party to have nominated the first two Catholics to be president of the United States. Let me ask you something. What would an Al Smith or a John F. Kennedy say to a president who says to the Catholics of America, change your religious beliefs or I will use my power as president to shut down your hospitals? There are not words to describe how far we've gone. And I have to admit, I was visiting just backstage with Gary Bauer. And Gary was pointing out something just recently. The EPA put out a flyer for Hispanic Heritage Month. And who did they choose to represent that? Che Guevara. You know, the thing is, you can't make this stuff up. No. <laughs> it's, that's actually what we were shaking our head about. I mean, whatever you think is too much, they go and do more. And, and I have to admit, my reaction, I actually thought it was quite appropriate that the EPA <laughs> was singling out Che Guevara. 
an oppressive murderer. Talk about you can't make this up. How many of y'all saw the Democratic Party platform? <laughs> when, as you know, they had deleted any reference to God and any reference to the fact that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. And when they took a little bit of grief, when they started getting criticism, the order came from on high, change it, stick it back. And so they did. But there was a little problem of needing to get the votes. And so they voted not once, not twice, not three times. The third time I thought I heard a rooster crow. And then, the mayor of Los Angeles, I guess, decided that he wanted to channel the mayor of Chicago, because he said, the eyes have it, never mind the votes. <laughs> and the reaction in the next five seconds, you can't make up. A room full of elected delegates, the chosen representatives of the Democrat Party, booed at full volume. You know, it's sad when you're looking at the elected delegates of the Democratic Party and you cannot tell which is more unpopular, God or Jerusalem. I'll tell you, I sent that video out to the thousands on our email list and I just encourage people, watch this, don't listen to me, I'm a, I'm a political candidate, you can't trust any of these yahoos. <laughs> but just watch this. Watch the video of these elected Democrat delegates and ask yourself, do these people reflect your values? This is an extreme and radical time. You cannot make this up. And the fourth and final thing I want to say that's threatened is our U.S. Constitution. This is a president who has repeatedly ignored and trampled on the Constitution. Who has ignored the rule of law, whether it was early in the administration where he said, I will refuse to defend the Federal Defense of Marriage Act. Or whether it was when he put an offshore drilling moratorium in place despite the fact that he had no legal authority to do so or whether it was just recently when he declared that 800,000 illegal aliens would be given amnesty by the stroke of a pen, never mind what the federal immigration laws provide. A man sometimes who wears the hat of King Louis. The state is he. But, you know, the Constitution gives the president the responsibility to, quote, take care that the laws be faithfully executed. And this president has repeatedly abdicated that responsibility. And you want to talk about threats to the Constitution. Before running for Senate, before marching with so many of you in this battle, I served five and a half years as the Solicitor General of Texas, representing Texas before the U.S. Supreme Court. Over and over again, we fought to defend the Constitution. And some of the victories we won, over and over again, were by one vote. The Supreme Court of the United States right now teeters in the balance. One justice. We are one justice away from a radical five justice liberal majority. Do you want to understand the stakes of this race? Let me talk about some of the cases we litigated when I was Solicitor General. We defended the constitutionality of the Texas Ten Commandments monument. We won 5-4. One justice away from that decision going away. We defended the constitutionality of the Federal Partial Birth Abortion Act. We won 
one justice away from that decision going away. We defended the Second Amendment individual right to keep and bear arms. We won 5-4. And we stood up and fought the World Court, the United Nations, and the President of the United States. We defended U.S. sovereignty. And we won narrowly as well. One justice, every one of those decisions go away. If you cherish the Constitution, as I know every one of you do, the Constitution is at stake in this election. I want to close with two quick observations. Number one, it is very, very easy to read the paper, to watch television, and, and, and to be demoralized. But I want to come to you with a word of encouragement and exhortation. There is something incredible sweeping this country. The book of Ecclesiastes says there's nothing new under the sun. What's happening right now reminds me very much of 1979. 1979, we had a radical leftist in the White House pursuing disastrous economic policies and an impotent foreign policy. It took Jimmy Carter to give us Ronald Reagan. And I am convinced the most long-lasting legacy of Barack Obama is going to be a new generation of leaders in the Republican Party standing up to defend liberty. doing this together. We are marching arm in arm, we the people, and together we will reclaim liberty. Together we will restore the Constitution, and together we will preserve that shining city on a hill that is the United States of America. Thank you, and God bless you. It is fine. Long